Hi, this is Elisa, and I wanted to help relations. Um, you will find it at a website where we have a few simulations throughout this course. Uh, once you enter, uh, this is Gravity and Orbits, once you enter the website address or click on uh, the hyperlink, you will come to this page. Um, when I'm here, I usually just click Run Now and you'll find it downloads. For me, I have a Mac, so it downloads into a folder. I then double click on what's been downloaded and I say yes I want to open it. This uses Java and so if you run into an issue you may get a message from Java. Hopefully it'll come up really quickly so as not to waste your time. You can see it asks do I want to run this application? Yes I do. I trust this site. And here we go. This is Gravity and Orbits. Um, there's a handout that goes along with this that will help you figure out exactly how to manage. So let's orient ourselves. Uh, many times I put the simulation speed on slow, especially when I'm first using it. This button right here is going to start the simulation. Let's go to the upper right up here. Here's the sun and the earth, and those are the two things I want to look at first, let's say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this, and it's going to show me the path that the Earth takes as it orbits the Sun. One of the things that's a caveat on this particular um, simulation, and I'm going to put a grid on, is that in actuality the Earth's orbit is a little bit more elliptical than this. This is a little bit more of a complete circle, but we're not going to be too picky about it. So if I was going to draw this, you can see I'd have the Sun in the center, I'd have the Earth much smaller a certain distance, um, making a somewhat elliptical orbit around the Sun. I'm going to stop that. Let's suppose I want to see how the Moon orbits the Earth. So here we have Earth and our Moon. I still want to see the path and the grid to help orient me, especially this first time. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, and you can see a couple of areas. Think about the direction of the orbit. Um, you can easily tell how long it takes to make one complete orbit because it tells you the days here. They're cumulative, so you can always reset and start over again. Same will happen if you do the Sun and the Earth. We're going to look at all three of these right now. We can see the moon, we can see the earth, and we can see the sun. What I want to see this time is I want to see the gravity force. I want to see what's happening in terms of gravity, and now I'm going to start my simulation. It's a little odd when you have all three. Now you can see I've reset. I'm going to go back to just the sun and the earth. I'm going to focus on those. I have my uh, gravity arrows here. I have the Sun and the Earth and the orbit. Suppose I wanted to change some of the factors. One of the things I can do is to make the Sun much larger. And you can see how that changes the gravity force. What happens if I do that? I'm going to let this play for a second. And we're going to see that it changes the orbit quite dramatically. We want to think about why. Why is the orbit of the Earth changed because of the change in the size of the Sun? We're going to be asking you some questions about that as you go through the handout, um, saying, okay, what does that mean and what does that look like? Um, then there's going to be a couple of different questions about gravity. Uh, this simulation hopefully will help you visualize that, and then between that and the content information that you received earlier, I don't think you'll have too much of a problem. Um, our handouts and our simulations are just to help reinforce information and help you feel like you have confidence that you in fact have learned the information and then share that information effectively with your students. So thank you. Hopefully this will set you up well for the simulation and handout on gravity and orbits. Thanks.